Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQP Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter two right now talking about the test management and moving into the next segment finally 2.4, the test documentation and the other work products. As a part of this, there are a lot of subtopics and talking about different uh, segments from the work product points of view and the parent documentations which are created as a part of the overall life cycle. So as a first topic, we are getting into 2.4.1, the test policy. But before that, let's get a quick introduction about the test documentation and other work products, uh, what exactly they are. Of course, documentation is often produced as a part of the test management activities, while the specific names of the test management documents and the scope of each document tend to vary the following are the common types of test management documents found in the organization on projects. Now, of course, there are several documents we are already aware of being at this position when we are learning about the test management tutorial. You would have seen yourself that there are so many documentation which your organization prepares in order to manage certain data, information, schedule, and a lot many other things. Now, of course, these are some of the standard documentation which we are going to talk about and they are not exactly uh, followed in different organizations depending on the type of the organization, depending on the type of the product or domain, you may have more than these or probably less than these. Of course, we will be talking about each one of them in detail so that you understand where do you put this document in a particular organization. Or being a test manager, you will also understand that why this document plays a vital role in your test process and how you can do definitely more when it comes to creation of these documentation or is there a possible way that you manage them, manage them better than this in your organization, then definitely come back and talk about it with me. Now, there are four major documentation which ISTQB identifies saying that the test policy is one, test strategy is another, test master test plan which you also call it as test plan and following that for each level they also recommend a level test plan. Now, of course there are each one of these which are going to be discussed in detail. We'll be getting started with the first one in this tutorial talking about the test policy but in some organization as I mentioned uh, you know there might be different specific needs for different documentation, but not always. Sometimes you create a single document containing all the information or sometimes you give them a detailed look so that when people want to look at policy, they only look at policy. When they want to have the information on strategy for a particular project, then you only look at that. So let's talk about the test policy, what exactly it is and why an organization must have it. The test policy basically describes why the organization test, like what your quality instructions or the overall inputs in terms of your organization testing practices or what exactly your testing methodology is or probably talking about that what unique testing do you perform or how do you specialize your testing process so that you're different from all other organizations? So test policy is just like company policy, that you have a unique company policy which, all, which is all followed by uh, all your employees across the organization. The same way here, we have something called as test policy, which you can showcase to your new joinees or your employees within the organization that this is what we do when it comes to Agile, which could be different from your previous organization. Or when it comes to a service-based organization, when the customer asks them, can you tell me more about your testing practices? Then we just push this document to the customer to tell them more about the test policy. Now that's what this important document plays contribution in your overall testing lifecycle. But to be frank, there are a lot of following things like, you know, this is a hierarchy that the parent document is test policy, then comes the test strategy for a particular project, then comes the test plan, and then comes the level test plan. That's the, you know, the tree going downwards. And that's where, you know, we need to understand that if you have got a test policy in your organization, then make sure the strategy is well within your test policy. That means it should be following your policy and should not be beyond that or outside that. So yes, if it, if it further defines the overall objectives for testing that the organization wants to achieve, the policy should be developed by senior test management staff in the organization in collaboration with the senior managers for the testing stakeholder groups. 
In some cases, the test policy will be complementary to or a component of a broader quality policy. This quality policy describes the overall values and goals of the management related to quality. Now you see that everything like something like mission, vision and goal and all those kind of things can also be added to this. And what do you try to achieve? You know, of course, everyone does testing, but what's about you? What's unique? You know, what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day, probably you want to become a Six Sigma organization. And what are you contributing in order to be a part of that? Or probably you want to become a CMM level five organization tomorrow. So what's your vision? What's your mission? And what is that you are doing right now in order to achieve that or, you know, move towards that? Now, when it is written, when you talk about a written test policy, uh, it basically consists of all these information at a high level uh, documentation. What is that? It summarizes the value that the organization derives from testing. Now, of course, business values of the testing should be mentioned there. Defines the objective of testing, such as building confidence in the software, detecting defects in the software, and reducing the level of quality risk. So these can be one of the examples which you can have as a part of the objective of testing that what do you basically deliver to the customer as a key aspect or the objective of testing. Is that about reducing the number of defect or trying to detect as many defects as possible or building confidence in the product that once it is delivered, nobody can find a particular issue and when they work, then they are very, very, very satisfied with your product and so on. Further, describes how to evaluate the effectiveness and efficiency of testing in meeting these objectives. Of course, just writing objectives is not enough. You need to justify your objective as well that how are you trying to achieve these objectives? And this must be achievable as well, okay? Just don't write something superstitious that cannot be achieved at all. Outlines the typical test process, perhaps using the fundamental process of the ISTQB also can be followed in order to define the overall approach which you follow throughout the typical test process. Uh, specifies how the organization will improve its test process as well from time to time because uh, when it comes to the maturity model of the organization which we'll be covering in the upcoming chapters uh, we definitely have to have a process improvement model that how you're going to move between the different maturity levels of any certification which you might have at your organization level so yes it should specify that information as well that how do you try to improve every time when you work with uh, different projects. So this test policy should address the test activities for a new development as well as for the maintenance phases. It may also reference internal or external standard for the testing work products and terminology to be used throughout the organization. So you know, no matter what organization you're working right now in, you would definitely have a you know, Confluence page or probably any other uh, wiki source which will have all these information that what's your standard naming convention, what's your exact terminologies or what kind of, you know, external standards which you apply in your, you know, testing practices. So, yeah, if you are having anything such, you call it as test policy in your organization and definitely it's really important uh, to have one so that you can showcase it to your employees to understand more about your organization or even to outsiders who want to you know, find more benefits from you. Well, that's all from the test policy team. We'll be getting back to you with the next topic talking about the test strategy. Stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.